are on its side. Still at Alternatives, by two of the immense perforated coral reefs which characterise this place, we tie up the boat. This is a favoured place for safaris, an outing of several days on board a comfortable boat. The programme not only includes exploration by day, but also night diving on the sandy seabed, where it's easier to find the nocturnal life. Life on board is planned and diving gives way to eating. During the meal, they talk about the great moments of the day. Some uh, glass fish and some small orange one fish. For their part, the crew takes advantage of this moment to relax a while. <laughs> Diving begins again, a few hundred yards from the gates of Ras Mohammed National Park. Alternatives takes its name from the alternatives it offers divers in the case of bad weather. They are always certain to find possible dives. Why not under the gaze of a goby fish? meeting with the grouper, somewhat annoyed for having been disturbed from its siesta. This scene does not at all discourage Malvina, one of the few painters who makes a living from her underwater work. After careful preparation and with the right equipment, all that remains is to find a suitable subject. Today, it's a tree of coral. Interrupted for a moment by the painter, the ballet recommences. One, two, squirrelfish. Sergeant Majorfish. A strange niche for two masked butterflyfish. This is the tree which has inspired Melvina. We will see it again once she has finished sketching it.
Night at the same place. The proportions seem to have changed and the inhabitants are no longer the same. In a cloud of plankton, three lionfish, who show a preference for the twilight or the night, perform the ballet of the hungry diners. Spotted reef stingray, another nocturnal creature, combs the sand of the seabed in search of food. A cube trunkfish whose tail fins serve as a rudder. shellfish are insomniacs. On camera, this hermit crab scurries away to find peace and quiet. Waking up with a start, this foxhole's goatfish has difficulty recovering its senses. In the sand of the seabed, many fish use camouflage to escape their predators. Although not on form tonight, the Spanish dancer is renowned for the grace of its movements as it performs its underwater dance. A few minutes away from alternatives, towards the middle of the Gulf of Suez, is Beacon Rock, another point of attraction for visitors to the Red Sea. Near the beacon, the wreck of the English steamship, the Dunraven, has lain since 1876, its bow at a depth of 18 metres 
and its stern at a depth of 28 metres. The propeller of this wooden ship is a landmark known to all divers. Head due south. Here the structure of the reef has become favourable to the creation of a luxuriant underwater environment at a place which is unique. It is the diving sites at the foot of Ras Mohammed, Yolanda Reef and Shark Reef. These cliffs are blocks of fossilised coral attached to the mainland by a thin strip of land. In front, two outcrops indicate the diving sites. Yolanda Reef, named in remembrance of a Cypriot freighter which ran aground there in 1981, and Shark Reef, recalling the sharks which previously abounded in these waters. Beside them, an enemy city, an underwater plateau at a depth of between 20 and 28 metres. The coral table is just below the surface, a few metres away from a vertical wall which plunges straight down to depths of up to 70 metres. One of the great predators of the coral reef, the snappers, who usually live alone, band together in groups during the spawning season. This strange fish with its broom-like tail is also an inhabitant of the open water near the reef. Strange mimicry of this resting octopus. Beside a blue triggerfish. Some trevally. A spotted ray. Moray. Those of the Red Sea can reach eight feet in length. By day they rarely leave their lair. But despite their reputation, these large solitary creatures are not really aggressive. However, if they are provoked or sense themselves in danger, they will bite and the resulting deep gash does not heal easily. The single horn characterizes the spotted unicorn fish, 
one of the surgeon fish family. The scorpion fish, not to be confused with the stonefish, also camouflages itself among the rocks. The celebrity of the tropical oceans is the Napoleon fish. Its friendliness and expressive gaze is what has made it the favourite of the divers. Several Trevally, in search of food, attempt an incursion into a shoal of snappers, but no doubt, influenced by the large numbers, pass on. Always a little comical with its large head and moving eyes, the trigger fish scours the sand in search of food. But take care, but can attack if threatened, showing its strong teeth and even biting the invading diver. A few feet from the coral table, silhouetted against the vast blue expanse, are the great privileged inhabitants of this place, the sharks, especially the grey reef shark. Endangered species, the green turtle, whose main enemy is man who hunts them for their shells. Then, an exceptional and thrilling sight, the manta ray in full aquatic flight. Incomparable grace for creatures whose wingspan can reach up to 20 feet. Accompanied by its cleaner, the fingerfish is one of those rare species of fish whose gills allows them to breathe both in salt water and in the brackish water where they are born. At Ras Mohammed, very near to the diving sites, is a mangrove swamp which serves their needs. The reefs just above the surface of the water enable swimmers equipped only with basic masks to view the underwater spectacle too. Another unique place, Eel Garden. It is the only fault in the unbroken vertical wall which extends from Ras Sa'atir to Ras Mohammed. A track carved by a now dried up river allows the divers to drive to the spot. And here is the attraction, a colony of sand eels, half out of their holes to seize their food they gracefully dance in the moving currents. A few hundred yards away is Masa Bareka, one of the best protected marine sites. Here access is prohibited without special authorization. However, a few of its beaches are open to the public.
coral is abundant, but as on the surface, it often has a fossilized appearance. A rare sight. Giant clams paving the seabed of Masa Bareka Bay. Among the sea anemones, the clownfish play. Protected from the poisonous sting, they have nothing to fear, and taking advantage of this, they seek refuge and protection here. The visitors here are rather numerous and their passage seems to have somewhat disturbed this trunk fish who prefers to withdraw. Created in 1983, Ras Mohammed is the first Egyptian national park. Its existence means that today diving can be practiced here in a near perfect environment. This region, where devastating rains are unknown, free from the pollution of factories and cities, is in fact an exceptional ecosystem. The origins of this park lie in the coral reef, which is today considered to be one of the two productive natural ecosystems in the world. The other is the tropical rainforest, which also faces conservation difficulties. Next to Yolanda and Shark Reef is an island, separated from the mainland by a mangrove forest, where these rare plants that live in salt water, nourished by their tangle of aerial roots, grow. The main inhabitants are these little crabs, who scurry backwards and forwards between the sand and the sea. The terns share their territory with the gulls, the storks, the herons and the ospreys. As night falls, it's not uncommon to come across a desert fox, for it's possible to spend the night in the park. The areas are managed in such a way as to prevent any future damage and destruction. The place is exceptional. Michael Pearson, warden of the National Park. Si on est sur un récif corallien ancien, here we are on an ancient coral reef, about 250,000 years old. In the park, you will find fossilized coral platforms dating back 60,000 to 9 million years. It's very interesting. The coral reefs here are very beautiful. They are very productive. They have enormous biodiversity. According to a recent study, there are about 200 different types of coral. The waters of the park are patrolled constantly by rangers in order to prevent a reoccurrence of the errors of the past. We found when we arrived there had been a dramatic change in the functioning of the coral reef where people were feeding the fish. The herbivorous fish were eating the eggs. There were pieces of bread everywhere. Sometimes we were attacked by a fish that wanted something to eat. There is a clear destabilization of the normal system on a coral reef when the fish are fed. All the diving sites of Sinai are today protected, allowing the coral reef to sustain the thousands of organisms which coexist in this complex, interdependent, underwater world.